Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to the continuing adventures of Nom Nomulus as he treks through the dungeon. So, uh, listen up, guys. Uh, <laughs> there's been a little bit of a mistake. Um, I recorded this video initially, and it was going great. And actually, I had a really good time recording it. Did had a few nice jokes, a few nice moments, and uh, yeah, it turns out that it never got saved. Um. Uh, when I used Audacity fi to fix the last video, uh, cause yeah, apparently that works great, so thanks very much to the Strongest Baka for mentioning it as an idea. Uh, you can totally use Audacity to filter out sounds and make it sound good and all. Um, well, I apparently neglected to, uh, flip the line in back to microphone choice, so none of my audio got recorded. So this is actually gonna be me taking a stab at post-commentary, and I haven't taken the time to set it all up, so... Uh, it's gonna be kind of interesting, because the things that I'm showing you on screen, I won't know I'm showing you, and I'll try and comment on afterward. <laughs> Bottom line, got to the lair, and uh, I've begun training some invocations here, as you can see, because finesse is a really cool ability, but it requires like eight or nine invocations to get it going. I didn't want to train it all the way up right off the bat, so I figured I would trickle for a little while, and then just, you know, as I'm throwing experience at things, throw it at that too. And you'll notice that here I'm using my breath weapon to catch retreating enemies. That's kind of right. Ooh! First real challenge of the lair. Uh, I always say if you can beat hydras, spiny frogs, and black mambas and water moccasins are in good shape. I paralyzed it and came up to beat it up, but it woke up and started beating me up. Uh, I took another couple punches at it, and OMG, it is actually winning. I used the scroll of fear, which usually works, and instead of after using both of them, it still didn't work. Now I've given it two free turns, so eventually I make up my mind that it's better to live than die, and uh, I use a blink scroll. You know, because healing 20 is only going to buy me another turn, and no need to just keep pegging away. Now I start uh, using polymorph, and sure enough I manage to turn it into a worm, or a snail. Snails are a lot easier to deal with than hydras. Uh, one polymorph other, the way it works is it... Uh, transmutes an enemy into an enemy that has a similar hit dice. Similar meaning around the same number. I'm pretty sure it's either plus one or exactly the same. Hit dice uh, does not necessarily equate with danger or difficulty, however. So, for example, uh, it is possible to turn, I believe, a hobgoblin or an imp into a boggart. Obviously, these are not at the same level of difficulty. Some enemies are obviously going to be at the top of their hit dice class, so transforming them is almost always a good idea. Hydra, in this case, is such, is such an example. The things a Hydra turns into are usually a lot more popular. Ooh, a new book. And right here, I remember I got thrilled because this is the perfect book for me. It's a baby transformation book, a uh, transmutation book, one, two, three, and four. Um, I'm going to want blade hands online. Unfortunately, it's 100% uh, impossible right now, so I pick up a low-level transmutation and start practicing it. Blade Hands is awesome. Blade Hands turns your arms into a pair of goddamn scythes, and you'll notice I tr turn everything else off because I want to get to it as fast as possible. And uh, it uses your strength and your dexterity as base modifiers to determine how powerful your attacks are. Uh, obviously, unarmed combat plays in there as well, so yeah. Here what I'm doing is I'm using my Venomous Spear and kiting these monsters. And that's kind of kind of really cool on the slow-moving enemy that you can do it with. I, I saved the Venom Spear last video for precisely such a possibility. I have no resist electricity, so charging down this guy is... Ah, what the fuck, let's just do it. There we go. Probably not my best move, in fairness. Eat, 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 and yeah, and I'm, I'm unarmed now 24-7, because once you hit unarmed combat 9 or so, you're pretty much better uh, in unarmed mode. Um, of course, here where I'm doing venom kiting, it's a little different. I'm not actually fighting him. When I'm ready to fight him, you'll notice that I'll switch off to uh, unarmed again and go in again. I think at this point he's just going to drip himself to death, so yeah. Empty-handed, kick his ass. Sack the corpses, sack. One thing that uh, I don't haven't mentioned, or if I have mentioned, I've forgotten because I don't know which video didn't get saved. So, one thing I didn't mention was uh, Okuwaru's uh, piety gain and how it works. 
thing about Okugoharu is he gives you a lot of credit for killing enemies that are more powerful than you as determined by having a higher experience level. Um, so you kind of want to not be killing rat. I mean, if you kill rats and sacrifice them, you're going to gain virtually no Okugoharu piety, no matter how many you're killing, because rats are worth nothing to you. Yeah, this time I used Heroism before fighting, which raises all of my combat stats by 5 sk skill points, and obviously it made a huge difference against the Hydra. My guess is the dodging is, is what really helped. Oh god, he bounced it off the wall, that hurt, let's hide. And recover, and into combat again. Rawr! Bet you won't get lucky this time, asshole. Yep, this time he missed, and he got himself pummeled, and there's a hat! I don't have any armor, including a hat. Of course, there's a lot of enemies, so let's deal with the enemies first. If I hide here... Damn it, he got he got a scroll, he got a scroll. Right. Uh, whatever, whatever. Come closer, come closer. Boom, he's dead. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I'm not getting a lot of piety out of all this. You'll notice that I have only gotten one god gift this entire game. And given that I don't have any source of armor... Oh god, all these are still untrainable. I could pick up spider form, um, uh, spider form boosts your speed quite a bit compared to base speed, so it's a reasonable escape spell, but it also makes you a freaking spider. Vulnerable poison and tiny and, and, I don't know, I, I've never used it and I don't anticipate really using it. I should, in honesty, I should pick it up just in case. If you're, it's much better to have and not need a spell on a character like this that's need and not have. And remember, I have Gourmand status, so I'm just constantly eating myself full. Test quaff the last potion. Ooh, invisibility. I can go for that. Okay, next to the lair. <sighs> Excuse me. Pick up a weapon, scroll, and again, I, I'm, I like dropping these weapon scrolls because without conservation, they're just going to get burned up. I got no weapon I actually care to enchant right now, so. It's pretty simple. Breathe, breathe, damn you. Why don't I breathe at these guys? There we go. Yeah, I, I tend to use my breath weapon just to soften up enemies. Um, I checked into it. The other advantage of purple uh, dragons is that spell casting becomes plus two, uh, rather than whatever its base value is, if I recall correctly. And that's actually really nice, because uh, I totally... Uh, Spellcasting helps with every spell, um, including the one that I actually want, which is the transmutation to dragon form. I picked up the book for that last game, and this game I picked up the book for transmutation, so I get to practice and uh, transmutations. Hopefully get it towards a point where I can become a dragon whenever I want. Uh... Normally I would be a little bit more concerned about the spell hunger inv invoked, but uh, I have the uh, Amulet of Gormon, so... Until I hit the point in the game where I need to start wearing Resist Mutation, I should be good. And I have a Cure Mutation in case I get one mutation, um, or drink the Potion of Mutation and don't like my results. i read that. Torment. Ow. Ooh, a lot of dogs. If I retreat, they should line up nicely, and then I can blast them all with something. Here, breath would be nice. I don't know what it is with my breath. I think I haven't learned that you should really never... Yeah, three is generally as many targets as you're going to hit. You know what? Just, just kill them all, dude. I don't know why I didn't go heroism. I guess I didn't need it. And clearly, I want the piety for my uh, item gain. But I'm not getting enough piety to jump that high, even with all these kills. Potion of Confusion? Fair enough. Ugh. Oh shit, this is a good time to heroism. Or, if I can get them all bottlenecked. Boom, four hits. Still should heroism, I don't know what's behind me. There it is. Oh, finesse and heroism, now they're all dead. So the way finesse works is, it's like a baby berserk again. Heroism just adds 5 to all your skills, yeah? Which is huge, because if you go from 0 to 5, that's a fairly big jump. If you go from 16 to 21, that's a huge jump. So, and if you go from 22 to 27, 
the amount of experience required to make that leap is astronomical, but it's just a single skill of low piety cost, so it's great. Tenes, on the other hand, is like a berserk in that it makes your actions happen faster. If I recall correctly, I'm gonna get hurt by yawning. Um, if I recall correctly, 1.5, uh, you can do 1.5 actions per normally what you would only be able to do one action. Or maybe it's double when you're finessed. That said, you can't, it, this does not include movement speed. If you move, you move at your ordinary speed with no hasting. Um, yeah. Trog, uh, can give you Berserk, which additionally gives you that massive health bonus temporarily. Personally, I prefer Berserk. I know it's got the drawback of being, uh, hungering and, uh, slow afterwards. Oh, yay, Blade Hand is learnable. Let's totally learn it. How, how did I get my, uh, my thing anyway, my transmutation anyway? I, I didn't think I'd gotten it that high. It's only like nine. Wow, okay. Not gonna say no. Uh, if anything, although I, I do want to eventually get dragon form, so I'm gonna take spellcasting a little to shave some of the hunger cost off. I don't intend to max spellcasting, don't get me wrong. But the other nice thing about spellcasting is tier 1 and 2 magic spells like Blink and uh, uh, Magic Dart maybe to get someone's attention or sting and apportation and, you know, basic, simple, you spell summon butterflies, these good, you, mephitic cloud even for tier 3, all of them will be more castable if I had decent spell casting, so it makes sense. Okay, here we go, blade hands, apparently the graphic for my hands didn't change, which makes me think that I'm using a custom model for some reason, hang on, let me make sure that's not the case. No, that's not the key at all. Right. I generally keep my negative sign uh, macroed to go down a, the nearest staircase. Uh, well, this is the menu it's supposed to bring up. And as you can see, you can change the doll to whatever combination you like. Or you can make it go with whatever your current equipment is, which I currently haven't set which now I have set up. There we go. So you see my arms have turned into these gigantic twin swords. And, uh... Oh, of course, I'm remapping. Uh, and um, the amount of damage I'm going to do to this wolf is going to be kind of horrific. I wonder if I still get my tail slaps. Let me pay attention and see if that's the case. I've noticed before. Doesn't seem like it. Mostly because the wolf just died. And of course, uh, fast. Oops. Problem about hydras, you can't use blade against them because they just grow their heads back, so I'm gonna wait till the spell wears off. Definitely will activate heroism. Okay, maybe not. Nope, there we go. Oh, I have the lightning rod. If I zap him with that, I can slow him, I can weaken him. Oh no, but I have to wield it, and that takes time. Yeah, forget it, just heroism and kill him. Lightning Rod, I don't know if I explained it before or not, but it's a really cool weapon. Uh, it's an evocable uh, rod, so you cast it and it doesn't spell. It only has one spell, which is to cast lightning, which it casts in a bolt-like fashion. However, if you stand at the same place and recast lightning, it will spam the lightning out across the two points that you've selected, so it gets a huge fan of lightning rather than just a single ray. Uh, you can take out loads of enemies if your positioning is good with it. Of course, given that it only has like 13 or 12 MP, and uh, it costs 6 MP per cast, it's not as cool as it might otherwise have been. If I could just like continually zap things like mini Zeus, that would have been pretty cool. Okay. But yeah, um, about around this point in the video, I realized what I had been telling you guys earlier about piety. I'm not getting a lot of piety fighting these lair creatures, and quite frankly, I'm leveling up slowly by slowly so that when I eventually do win, I'm going to continue not getting a lot of piety fighting the next thing. And once I realized this, I thought, how do I break the cycle? And the answer is to scream trog door as loudly as possible. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. Do I take this guy on head to head? I tried to polymorph him first. 
didn't work, so I beat him up. I hate being sick. Just shuts down your regeneration. And I swear to god, it does something else too. It feels like your combat skills go down. Blades this time to finish him quickly. New potion. Paralysis. Okay, so at this point I've tried many potions and still not gotten that mutation potion. I want the mutation potion. I, I want to mutate and see what I get. I can always change back and sometimes the mutations are very beneficial. A level of RF would be awesome. <laughs> RF means resist fire, for those of you who are uninitiated. Alright, beat up a shark, beat up a jellyfish, the jellyfish runs, beat him up on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, and it looks like... Three floors into the lair, I have not got a single god gift throughout the lair. And so I make the snap decision, you know what? I'm going to go to the Orcish Mines. Orcish Mines, I will fight higher level orcs. They're all more compressed, so my piety will go grow faster. And, oh, look at my luck. I immediately come across an ice cave. That would be a good place to... Oh, shit. Totally surrounded. Uh, definitely went heroism finesse, and now it's just a bunch of orcs. Kill all the high damage targets at first, and then everybody else can just drop. In retrospect, the finesse might have been overkill. Uh... They were, once I had heroism up, I just had to kill the big orc, and all the other ones weren't going to get through my 13 AC, 23 evade. Of course, you know what you don't want to do is think of that, then try it, then die. So, better to be a little bit lower on piety, a little bit higher on life. Okay, Let's go ahead and heal up before I enter, and the other thing I do is, it's a ice portal, so I'm almost certainly going to lose potions if I get attacked. So I'm going to ditch a huge amount of potions outside here. I keep a couple curing potions, a couple, or at least one resistance potion. I think I keep my speed potion in the end, I don't remember. I know I keep might, and uh, I keep a couple heal wounds. The idea being, you don't want to find yourself without any potions. You have potions for a reason, but yeah. Oh, here we go. Perfect, perfect moment to use this. Wield lightning rod, zap. In the second zap, note I position it, and boom, I get a nice fan of electricity that nails them all. And then a third zap. Okay, so apparently I get three shots to finish the job. Or that third zap was probably my breath weapon. No, it was a zap. Cool. Now I ditch the raw to keep it in my pocket for it to recharge while I uh, prepare myself for the inevitable counterattack. Because when you make as much noise as the lightning storm, you just know you're going to attract some attention. Here I'm agonizing and eventually decide two defense skills, two offense skills. I want dragon form pretty badly, and that means I need to keep training transmutations and slash or spellcasting. Tra spellcasting, truthfully, is kind of... Oh, how I would love to lightning rod, but here I settle for drain, I think. Since they're all in the way. Nope. Okay, never mind. That ran out or something. There is the drain. And now I think I can just beat him up hand to hand. I mean, yeah, look at this. I didn't even activate Blade's hands and they went down. Okay, heal up first. Always heal up first. Uh, Ice statues. Ow. Okay, let's back away and then decide how we're going to deal with this. I could beat him up, but... Being in range of two ice statues at once, kind of a recipe of I wish I had more resistance to cold. Here I disintegrate to open a single stone pathway so I can beat it up from behind. But, oh god, the ice clouds, and I still attack once while in the ice clouds. Should have activated a resistance the moment I saw that happen. I didn't, and now I'm running. It's a one-off run, so, you know, I don't have to play optimally, but... It'd be nice. Let's go ahead and eat something, and then proceed back into the area. These are all summons uh, from the ice statue, but I'm not exactly going to just let them roam free. Uh, round two, baby. You probably haven't recovered health as fast as I have. You're a statue, after all. Here, I was checking to make sure I didn't have any uh, good weapons to use against him. Punchinello, and he's down. All right. And here, I, instead of attempting a repeat with the other side, I just decided I'll take a one-turn step into... Darkness territory and then just keep moving because it's unlikely he's going to cause serious damage in one turn okay 
roaming along through in this corridor. Again, I play my cards right. I advance one square at a time. I make sure that I'm fully recharged before. And fuck me, it's a nice dragon. I don't have resistance to cold. And it's seen me. But here I make the decision. I'm actually going to fight this. I start off by going Potion of Resistance for Resist Cold. I then drink Potion of Might, I believe. Uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm going full out, right? Uh, Heroism and Finesse. I think that's all I got, right? Right. Here it goes. And Might. And Blade Hands? Why do I not have... There's Blade Hands. I take them both on. One's down. Low. I'm getting very low, actually. Two's down. Actually, that thing died in one hit. That was kind of awesome. Butcher the dragon corpse. Because I do need the food. And unfortunately, once I butcher it, I remember I can't use ice dragon armor or ice dragon hides on a dragon. Because, you know, they can't wear any body armor. Which sucks, because I was all excited about finding it, too. But, oh well. I killed a couple dragons. That's going to do worlds for my piety. And I found an artifact ring. And this artifact ring would all go, want to be an amazing friggin' ring. Wizardry? Check. Intelligence plus four? Check. And plus five extra damage every time I hit somebody with my arms or with my auxiliary attacks? Definite, definite plus. So this ring uh, here is going to replace sustenance. And quite frankly, uh, sustenance shouldn't even be in my pocket anymore since it will never be useful again. I mean, when am I going to want sustenance versus protection plus five and, uh, I guess maybe in a Minotaur's Lair or something. Never say never. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I'm certainly not going to pick up an extra sustenance screen, you can be sure of that. Um, here I'd get cocky and decide I'm going to explore the second half of the cavern. Because, you know, I've, I've experimented with the lower half with the dragons. All I have to do is get past an ice statue, so let's try that again. Disintegrate. And, uh, I go blade hands first, and note how much faster it dies. And about here I realize it wasn't so much cocky, because, well, it was pretty straightforward. It was cocksure is what it was. A lot of gold, and that's the, the entirety of it. Um, maybe that middle island is something. I consider disintegrating through this wall, and then I think better of it. I don't want to blow charges for nothing. Then I decide, hey, I can memorize flight. So I use flight to finish exploring, and yeah, now it really does just look like a central block rather than a hidden chamber. So, you know, I'm not going to blow magic mapping on it. Off we go. Right now, with all the piety I gained from double dragon slayage, <laughs> slaying the double dragons, I should be in really good shape for the orcish mines, and so I get started and hack my way through it, son. And, you know, here comes the kill chaff. They all just die. Horribly. Here I make a mistake and don't realize that I'm in Orc 4. I still think I'm in Orc 3, and I'm acting like that for, you know, j just randomly doing shit. And, you know, it helps that so far all I've faced is something I might just as easily have faced in Orc 1 or 2. A bunch of ordinary Orcs. Oh, hell, it's an Orc Priest. Uh, I, it's not that I can't fight her, it's that I don't have any good positioning. So I just run blindly, and I end up here with three Orc Priests staring at me. Not High Priest granted, but see, I lost so much health. Instant teleport, get out of there, and... Uh, Alright, let's try this again with a little less hubris. Around here I realized that I had been in Orc 4, and... Kind of have a little oh, a gift! A pitted executioner's axe. Yeah, this unarmed combat specialist has been gifted a brilliant high-level berserker axe wielder weapon. Trog is is such a troll. Anyway, whatever. Let's kill stuff. I don't remember if I ever actually try out the Executioner. The thing about Executioner's Axe is you have to commit to the axe line for it to work. You have to be like level 24 with axes. Uh, to really, or 20 with axes plus, just, just to for it to not be such a huge downer with 200% delay. I, I IRC, they actually changed the damage a little bit on it uh, and gave it cleave in the next edition. Maybe that was this edition. I'm pretty sure that was the next edition. 
the game. Anyway, slaughterhousing, eating, slaughterhousing, eating. And do I head upstairs now? Nope. More killage. Yeah, see, I learned my lesson after that. After I accidentally realized I had been in Orc 4, I made sure to only intentionally go there and, you know, to explore a bit more thoroughly. Here, perfectly, I, I get him to come around the corner to fight me so he doesn't get any high summons or anything off, and then boom. And I'm doing all this without the blade hands. I could be using blade hands more. I just don't want to deal with the constant hungering status. Um, I'm also making a lot of uh, piety by sacking corpses rather than eating them. So, it's kind of a combination. Wait out my poison. Wait out my poison and continue exploring. But so far, Orc 4 has been a pretty straightforward clear. Um, I'm notably lacking in armor. I think at this point in the game, I'm wearing a cap, unenchanted. A... Do I have gloves? I don't think I had gloves. I think I might have had boots. Might not. Bottom line, I think I'm wearing one or two pieces of armor tops, rather than a full set of four. And I'm talking basic shit. I'm not even getting into, like, artifacts. Here I drain everything a couple times before attacking, and then I realize I'm going to lose this fight. If not now, then eventually, so I need to run. I don't have enough along the line casting power. Um, I work very hard to make sure that orc with the bow stays behind these orcers and they all stay in line. But then I get cocky and try and attack again, and yeah, I get double whacked for that, so I just run. Here I take the risk of pulling him up. I have 16 health, so I don't take a risk twice. Cure, only to realize I left all my potions outside the goddamn ice pits. You'll notice that he dealt me enough damage that I would have had 4 health left if I hadn't cured. So, it, won't, it didn't save my life, but it damn near, it was damn near. Pick up all my potions heal up over time, and now back to Orc 4 for the showdown. I think, again, I forgot that I was on Orc 4 and then realized, oh wait, the, the reason there's so many ogres is that I'm here. Uh, I'm dying, so I use a scroll of fear and make them all run away, and then I pick one target at a time to take down. Breathe at the mage to come at me, take him down, and then I can't find the other guys eventually, so I just let them be. Yeah, this one's... Oh, no, there he is. Okay, I, get him. I guess I get them all. Huh. Cool. Uh, back to fourth floor. Fourth floor. Floor four. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Uh, and again, this time I'm being a little bit more staircase careful. A little bit. I mean, you gotta realize, I, I feel very powerful about this point in the game. I have powerful attacks. I have dragon level health, which means that... Put it in perspective, if I was a deep elf wizard uh, with... 15 to 20 uh, fighting skill and max level, well, 10 to 15 fighting skill and max level, I would have only slightly more health than this. Oh, God, that hurt. That bolt of fire. <gasps> what did he hit me with? Well, whatever it is, I need to heal wounds. He did it again, so I need to heal wounds. He hits me with a club, and then he casts Crystal Spear, so I need to heal wounds. Bolt of fire, I need to heal wounds. Another bolt of fire, I need to use curing. Another bolt of fire, and he's dead. That one ogre made me burn five or four potions of heal wounds. I should have just turned on blade hands earlier when I fought him, but, you know, I was not giving him respect, and he happened to have crystal spear and bolt of fire and self-healing. All wonderful things for an ogre to have. So watch, next time I come across an Orc Priest, I'll be a little bit more careful. Careful meaning, you know, to blow him up. Oh, there's one right now. And yeah, rather than fight him, I uh, I take no chances and go to the stairs first so that I close the distance a bit. I am spamming heroism, actually, at this point, so I'm probably not going to get a whole lot of Okawaru gifts. Here I chase him down and uh, prepare to do battle... What am I using against him? I think I'm polymorphing him. Well, failing to polymorph him. Use my javelins for some distance attacks until he dies eventually. Theorism on my evade is in the 20s, so... Actually, without it, it's in the 20s. With it, it's 25. That's very impressive. 
And apparently I've had my slaying ring off this whole time. See, that kind of shit makes me mad. And it's like, when did I take this off to begin with, and why did I keep it off? Ooh, dragon form. Dragon form is only 70% castable, but it is no longer in, like, the 100% uncastable. Granted, for dragons, it's a slightly lower level spell, and it's easier to memorize, because it only takes one school to train. You don't have to train the fire school as well. Although for my fire conjurers, that fire skill is usually what makes it easy to cast because they've already maxed their fire, so, you know, tomato, tomato. Of course, my fire stormers don't have any real reason to use it, so, tomato, tomato, tomato. And now I see the shops, so I know I'm getting close to the core of the level. Back off, because hallway fighting is totally to my advantage. And, uh, oh, he doesn't even know you're here, dude. Scream. Nope, there they are. Now they know. Other nice thing about this vantage point is I can back away and get, and break... Oh, a cloak! And uh, MR cloak. MR cloaks are great. Uh, that should help slightly with Crystal Spear. I see. I think that has to check your MR. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. That's disintegrated. I think enough. Okay, again, one-on-one, -on -one, I'm happy. Any more than that, and things get dicey pretty quick against these guys. All they need to do is get a couple lucky hits, where sh which I don't simultaneously get lucky evades on, and I'm in serious shit. Of course, I have the he oh, I don't have heal wounds anymore either. Okay, I'm gonna use the invisible over. Uh... Shit, I should really uncurse that so I can keep my damage boosts and lose my AC boosts, but whatever. Blade hands, cut them apart. No chances taken whatsoever. Hey, while well, well, we still have blade hands on, no, never mind, they're gone. Go ahead and finish tending to my corpses. Alrighty, um, so yeah, I put the ring back on, good. This time I remembered, presumably because of my failure to do so last time. Knock out a couple ogres, and here I start inspecting the shops, and I'm just going to spare you guys the suspense and tell you that apart from the scroll of acquirement, and a couple of reasonable potions. I think maybe I get a blink scroll at some point. This stuff is all useless. Of course, when you have two weapon stores for an unarmed use, uh, fighter, yeah, there's the blink scroll. Two weapon stores for an unarmed fighter, of course it's gonna be fucking useless. Uh, just nothing you can bet. I get the potion of might, I believe, in the end, and the potion of magic mapping because they're so cheap, and might can still. Since I can't get plus five strength by berserk, I since I don't have berserk, I use might for the same effect. And that's that. Uh, I should really test the Rude Executioners or Pitted Executioners Axe that I was god-gifted at this point. Um, I don't think I get around to it, but whatever. And there's that plus four strength ring, which will probably never make the cut versus plus six protection. Alright, plus five protection, plus six damage. Mm. Yeah, a search for armor shows a depressingly small amount of armor available in the dungeon. But yeah, here it's just sundry clearing and finishing up. But clearly I've made it through the Orcish Mines. This video went a little bit longer than I'd intended, but uh, that's what happens when you change horses in midstream. I did manage to secure two god gifts. With any luck, I'll get another three or four before the game is out. Uh, yeah, what else is there to say? Oh, oh, there's one other really cool event before the game ends, if I recall correctly, um, which I will show off shortly. <laughs> uh, I don't get to use this spell very much because I don't usually go unarmed combat. And this uh, form is all about unarmed combat, but dragon form is now sub-70%, so I quickly memorize it. Sub-70 when I'm wearing the correct ring. Uh, I quickly try to memorize it, take three shots, and then I cast it to end the game in dragon form. Now, I don't know what the miscasts are, but I assume they're mutation related, so I don't know if this was smart to do, but... <sighs> there I am, a purple dragon. You'll notice that my health is 166. I still shoot my same bolts of dispelling energy, that I my weapons been upgraded to teeth and claws, that my strength is higher, and uh, AC is higher. I'm basically not something you want to screw with right now. I'm a freaking dragon. It doesn't last very long. Transmutation can be extended by having more power or casting it more often, so I intend to keep training a little bit, especially to get the uh, skill cost, or the food cost and the percentage failure down. But, uh, 
Yeah, dragon form has been attained, baby. I have wanted to do this for a long time, and now I have a dragon transmuter that can actually transmute. Next time, we'll do something else. I don't know what, but we'll see when I get there. I will see you guys next time.